Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about kunzite, named after the gemologist George F. Kunz. Kunzite is a variety of a mineral called spodamine. It is a relatively new gem when compared to diamonds and rubies, for it was only recognized as its own type of spodamine in 1902. Kunzite is a type of lithium aluminum silicate and has a pink color because of tiny amounts of manganese. This beautiful color makes kunzite popular as a gemstone. It can be cut and faceted like other gems. Kunzite has a hardness of 6.5 to 7 on the moss hardness scale, which makes it much softer than corundum or diamond. Its specific gravity is 3.18, which means it's 3.18 times as dense as water, so it'll sink. The refractive index is 1.660 to 1.676. The refractive index is the relationship between the angle at which light enters the stone and the angle of refraction. Kunzite's birefringence is 0.014 to 0.016. This is the difference between the highest and lowest values of the refractive index. Kunzite is a monoclinic mineral, which means it has a two-fold axis of symmetry. When it is rough, its crystals often come in the shapes of blades and are beautiful even without being polished. It's often found in pegmatite ores along with other minerals that are largely made up aluminum or lithium. These gems include tourmaline, emerald and other kinds of beryl. Pegmatite itself is a good source of lithium. Because kunzite is valued for its color, the three others C's, clarity, cut and carat, don't carry as much weight as they would with a white diamond. As with a diamond, the greater the clarity of the stone, the more it is worth. Most specimens of kunzite don't have inclusions that can mar its color or the way light falls through it. Kunzite has a vitreous, or glassy luster and can be transparent to translucent. Some of the best specimens are found in California's San Diego County, and others are found Western Australia, Sweden, Mexico, Canada, Afghanistan and Pakistan. Because of its softness and because it has two directions of cleavage, the most popular cut for a kunzite gem is the emerald cut. This is a type of step cut made for the easily chipped emerald. However, kunzite can also be brilliant cut, which brings out its sparkle, fire and radiance. Large specimens of kunzite are not unusual. Crystals have been found that are dozens of feet long and weigh several tons, but these are rarely gem-worthy. But even large, gem-worthy examples of kunzite don't cost nearly as much as a diamond of the same carat weight. Because kunzite is brittle, it's best worn only on special occasions and should not be set on rings or any other piece of jewelry that's subject to being knocked. Ultraviolet light can cause kunzite's colors to fade, so it should be kept out of direct sunlight. The most sought-after type of kunzite is a lush pink with hints of violet, though a quality gemstone can be any shade of pink. Some specimens can be improved through irradiation, and a buyer should ask if the stone they're interested in has been irradiated.
Another thing that makes kunzite so attractive to buyers is that it exhibits pleochroism. This means it changes its color depending on the angle through which the gemstone is viewed. With kunzite, the richest colors are on the top and bottom of the stone, and this, along with its brittleness, presents a challenge for the gem cutter. Because kunzite isn't in as much demand as diamond, rubies, sapphires or emeralds, even a fairly large specimen is affordable for many people. One of the more notable pieces of kunzite jewelry is a tiara owned by Birgit, the Duchess of Gloucester of the United Kingdom. That's it. I hope you will find it helpful. Please share your comments below and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.